Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are creating anti-gravity droplets. So let's begin. We will start by creating a geometry nodes. The first node inside will be grid, which will act as our base surface. I will set the grid size to 1.5 for diameter. Next, add a polyextrude node to give the grid some thickness. I will set the distance to around 0.25 or 0. 0.025 After I draw a point from volume nodes, this will scatter points evenly across the surface. For the dense distribution of points, I will set the point separation to 0.01. And also don't forget to enable the polyextrude output without it is not generating points in volume. To break the uniform pattern, I will add a little bit jitter scale which give the points a more natural and randomized separation. Next, we will add attribute noise node, which introduces the variation of noise which we need. First, switch to attribute noise from vector to float. Then scroll down and change the noise from positive to zero centered. After that, adjust the element size and choose the noise type. Set this according to your preferences. Now go back up to attribute noise. In attribute name, we will add new attribute. Add comma in between and attribute name will be our density. This attribute helps us to control the emission of the droplets. Next add a null node and rename it to outsource. This will serve as the output of the our source. Now we need a dop network nodes. Inside the dop network add a flip object and flip solver. This two form the basic setup we need to run a flip simulation. Now connect the nodes the same way as shown in the video. Let's come outside the dot network. Copy the path location of the outsource null. Then go back inside the flip object. Change the input type to particle fields. And paste the outsource in the SOB path location. To fix this, now go to guide tab in the flip object. Select the particles and change the visualization mode to particles so we can clearly see them in the viewport also. Next, go to flip solver under the volume motion. Find volume limits here, exist the box size and the center value so that the simulation bound properly match the flip object. Also, just above the flip solver settings, mix out the velocity transfer method is set to epic. In the flip solver setting, set the time scale to 0.1. This slow down the simulation. Next, go to particle motion tab under reseeding. Disable the particle reseeding. This helps to maintain a consistency particle counts and keep the droplet simulation stabilized. Now, come under the volume motion. Enable the surface tension and set it to value 0.1. And also enable the density. Now if we play the simulation, we will notice that the emitter just keeps shrinking instead of holding its shape. Look like something missing. To fix this, come back outside and copy the particle separation value. Then inside the flip object, paste it as the relative references. And set the point separation 0 0.01. Next, connect a pop drag node to the second input of the flip solver. Set the drag intensity to 0.25. The time scale will be 0.1. To add a velocity, we need particle warp node. Inside warp, add a bind node and set the input name to density so we can bring the density attribute which we created early. Now add a compare node. On the compare node, change the operation to greater than. For the second input of the compare node, add a parameter node. Name the parameter threshold, so we can easily control the density cutoff value. Let's add a switch node for the first input. Connect a constant node and set it to vector. 
For the second input, connect the particle's velocity. This will let us switch between a fixed vector value and the actual particle velocity based on our compare condition. Finally, connect the output of the switch node to the V attributes. This way, the particle will follow the velocity control we set up through the density condition. Let's play the simulation to check the results. Ok is working. Now copy and paste the same warp. Ok before that first rename the original name or warp to L. And second should be force. Now come inside the warp change the output from V to force. So instead of using velocity we are using force. Now also remove the input of the V. And duplicate the constant node and connect it to the third input of the switch node. Next take a force input and connect it through a vector to floats node. This will let us break the force into individual XYZ component for the final controls. Then pass the value through float to vector node but only connect the X and Z channel. Next connect the channel into 4th input of the switch node. Then connect the switch output to the Y output of the float to vector. Just remove the extra one. Finally take the output from the float to vector and connect it to the force output. Now on the constant node third inputs change the type from vector to float. This will let us directly control the force value. Set the force scale around 80 it's work for me. If you want you can go higher. Let's come outside and add a dope input node. Set the dope network path to our dope net. In object will be flip object. After this add a fluid compression node, this will optimize the simulation data, make it more efficient to work with. After this, if you want, you can add a file cache node at this stage. This will save out the simulation and make playback much smoother and faster to work with. Next add a particle fluid surface node, set the visualization to velocity and convert it back to the particles. Finally once you are happy with the result, save the simulation to disk. Add the last once again add a particle fluid surface node. Now copy the point separation value from the point from volume nodes and paste related reference here. 